we get into the drones curriculum, um, introduction, same, you know, unmanned ground vehicles, electrical engineering, energy transfer, um, drone code and technologies is a little bit heavier in that section because the, the technology that's embedded in the drone controller. Uh, systems thinking, uh, you kind of have to understand how systems work to understand how all of the, the different subsystems come together to be able to make it do what it does. Uh, flight physics, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, and then a culminating project again. So define what a drone is. Um, so works unmanned without human intervention, gathers information, you know, aut autonomously makes decisions, navigates, performs tasks, um, and then automatically avoiding situations that may be damaging or harmful. It's technically another line that says unless that's what it's intended to do, but students generally take that as let's smash things together. Um, but so, you know, satellites, you know, are unmanned. They have to do what they're doing and they make course corrections and changes and stuff like that all on their own. Um, the Mars rover is probably the best example of a, an autonomous drone because it's, you know, 93 million miles away or whatever that takes six months to get there to fix something if it breaks, so it has to work. Um, talk about UGV, specifically unmanned ground vehicles. Um, basically different types, different applications, what they're used for. Um, this one's a harvester, so combine. Um, we got, for the last 10 years or so, combines that have GPS systems in them that drive themselves. There's a dude in the cab, just hits the big stop button if something runs out in front of it or something comes apart on the machine. And they'll have trucks that'll follow next to them that have no driver in them that just get fed into until it's full. And, then they stop and drive back to where they're supposed to be. Um, this is a little pack mule uh, made by Boston Dynamics. Um, it's called Big Dog. Uh, it's 300 and something pounds itself. It'll carry another 400 pounds almost and for 25 miles. All it does is follow a GPS bracelet. So you could load it with ammunition, supplies, another soldier or whatever, tell it to go somewhere and it'll just go there. Uh, we got a pretty cool video about that one and then our six by six with the GPS stuff on it. Uh, getting a little bit of electrical engineering, energy transfer, um, talk about energy path, um, volts, watts, and amps. So in this example, our battery is uh, two water tanks. So on one side you have a supply of water, so a, a surplus of electrons, and the difference in pressure between the two would be voltage. Uh, the amount of flow across is amperage, and then the amount of work done with the little wheel in the middle is wattage. So it's a good analogy for kids to understand how a battery works. Uh, do a little bit more on that with the different chemistry types and things like that, the batteries. Um, they construct an electric motor, they have to label all the parts. We got a 1920s video about electric motors that I don't think anybody could do a better job explaining because it's, it's something that has never changed how they worked. Um, and it's like, if you've ever watched any of the old Disney movies um, that were not, not even necessarily meant for children, um, but it's kind of that same guy's announcer voice where he talks to Donald Duck, but he narrates the whole video and it's, kids will watch it and it's, that's the impressive part. But, um, drone code and technologies, uh, this is where we get into the, the stuff that's on board, uh, three axis compass, three axis accelerometer, three axis gyro. Uh, allows the, the drone to actually navigate through the air and stay stable in the air. Um, so stuff for UGB self-navigation, GPS system, we use an encoder for tracking speed, and then telemetry radios for sending information back to us. Um, talk about a little bit about waves and electromagnetism. Um, everything that we use for control, for sensing, uses electromagnetic waves or light waves, sound waves of some kind. Um, getting applied systems thinking. Um, just the normal basics, inputs, outputs, boundaries, open and closed systems, interdependence, and optimization. Um, every system, whether it's a natural ecological system, optimization is always a goal. Um, some kind of a balance between performance and you know, functionality. Uh, so an orchestra is a really good example of a very well-functioning system. Not one part of it can perform any better than the other without it detracting from the whole system. Um, subsystems, you know, so this is the, the lander capsule that had the, the sky crane and then the rover and then a subsystem of the rover and then the wheel is a subsystem of that, um, how they're all interdependent. Uh, we do some interrelationship diagrams, this will be a, a thing that we guys, we go through. 
um, basically labeling the inputs, outputs, the constraints, and things like that. Um, talk about flight physics, um, air deflection, air pressure, laminature, curvature, things that make a, a propeller or a wing work. Um, get into UAVs, their different applications. Um, from science, you know, basically weather monitoring, stuff like this. This guy will fly around the planet without any human intervention. Um, no additional batteries or fuel, it just uses solar power. Um, reconnaissance stuff, it's where 99% of the military unmanned aerial vehicles comes in. Um, and then our quadcopter is kind of a multi-purpose. can be used for just for fun flying or for videography, stuff like that. Some multi-rotor specific flight stuff, um, how they function, how it works. Um, this will go through pretty heavily. Um, and then the culminating project, um, basically we've got a series of tasks, challenges that come in the curriculum that depending on your area, you may be heavy into agriculture or heavy into you know, videography or farming. Um, just depends on what you're doing, inspection, stuff like that. So we've got a bunch of different themed tasks um, split between the aerial guy and the ground guy to choose from. So. Yeah. Uh, like you say in Common Core Math, the Next Generation Science Standards alignments. Um, we didn't pick anything that was a stretch. So everything that's in there is something that we cover pretty, cover, you know, cover pretty well and it fits very well. Um, since it's not a science class or not a math class, we don't have to cover everything in every detail. So we didn't want to try to force anything in and have it not quite fit or have to go too far away from what we were doing to to make it work. Um, student performance development process, we split it into eight categories. Um, the first seven of them are inspired by Tony Wagner's book, um, The Global Achievement Gap. Uh, he went and interviewed like the Fortune 500 companies and asked them what skills they're looking for. Um, none of them were hard skills. None of them were being able to do anything physically. Um, that's easy. They, you can teach anybody to do anything. Um, what they were looking for is critical thinking, problem solving, you know, collaboration, you know, leading by example, things like that, uh, agility, adaptability, soft skills, interpersonal skills, things like that. Um, and then we added organization and housekeeping because we got thousands of parts. So the kids are responsible for making sure everything comes back at the end of the year. They've got sheets that are 11 by 17 sheets with one to one scale pictures of everything. They can set all the parts down. You can come by, sign it off. They can put it back in the bags and the boxes. Um, that way you know everything's there for the next year. Um, and we do it as, a, as an example, so do it as a, a one through four. So one sits on the bench, doesn't do any problem solving, lets everybody else do all the work. Uh, four takes initiative creates, you know, with creative solutions to problems, you know, looks for things and does a lot of work, does you know, the actual job. Um, so it's pretty easy to see this behavior in the class. Um, you know, and it's one of the things that we generally do it as kind of a, an interview process, you know, about halfway through and then at the end saying, hey, you know, pull one kid aside and say, you know, I've, I kind of noticed you aren't doing so much stuff. And, you know, so it gives them a chance to be able to see this and see what it takes to improve. Um, for me, this would have been huge in school to know what the difference between a D and a C and a B and an A was, you know, be able to read something that says this is the amount of work between these two. Um, it's, it's a massive thing so that they can see the improvement. Um, the students get a design journal that has a basically a simplified version of this. It doesn't have like the notes sections and stuff. It just tells them what the difference between each kind of grade is.